you know we like to bring you the good stuff. So today we're taking a look at a pair of factory exclusive custom shop Martin guitars. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. We appreciate it when you do. If you want to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom swag and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. And we're going to be talking on the podcast about upcoming stuff in 2024 and the NAMM show, but these are not from any of that. This is exclusive to... Factory visits from the Martin factory in Nazareth, PA. Oh, yeah. We've had some of these before. Not these exact ones, but we've had guitars that we picked out from up there. And, you know, you go up there, you pick the woods, but then they try to tempt you into buying things. <laughs> because we're going to have to look, wait a look year at this. Look for a. Uh, yeah, ah. There we go. Yeah, we're going to have to wait a year for the customs that we put together. So. You know, we might as well take some stuff now. In the meantime. Yeah, yes. in the meantime. And these are very different guitars from each other, and the story behind them is very different. This one, much more similar to a few that we've had in the past, are kind of pre-built customs, uh, you know, from the custom shop office, where after you pick the woods, you go and you talk about the guitars, and then they got pretty stuff on the wall, and they're like, hey, we made these for whoever might come here, and they're all kind of unique. I think that these are maybe NAM custom, like either prototypes or just kind of experimenting to mm -hmm. see because we had that offset snowflake guitar mm -hmm. and in the past stuff similar to that has been hanging up on Pops the wall, up. you know? So I think that's where the custom shop guys kind of stretch their legs and experiment and just see what kind of fun stuff they can make. You and I have a pretty cool job. We do. That seems like a cooler job. <laughs> That's our final frontier right there. <laughs> like, we're just going to just sit around and dream up stuff and then have a guitar factory just to see it come to life and go, Sip yeah, a drink and be I like, like it, I like it. You know what, man? Maple GP. I would bankrupt Martin from... <laughs> yeah, dude. I have an and, idea. <laughs> dude, and we've seen stuff up there that's like, for fun, they do like a style 45, 12 yeah, fret yeah. with Madagascar. So it's wild. I remember, you remember the, uh, I think it was an anniversary guitar that had the, the whole clock motif and it had the clock and the that headstock. That was the D200? Yeah, yeah, so I was there when, uh, before that was announced and saw, I think the prototype, uh, it was hanging in there and played it. it, was missing the eventual watch piece that they were describing to me and I was just like, you have a cool job. Yeah, how long did this <laughs> take, dude? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so anyways, so yeah, the result of uh, some great minds at work creating yeah. some very cool, um, kind of one-off-ish type stuff, very exclusive. I think that one is cool because it's so wildly different than what we typically get or see from Martin. It really is. Well, let's talk about this one first. Yeah. Um, so this is, an, is it an OM? GP. It's, it's a GP. That's a GP. Yeah, right I was like, this is not an OM. It looks curvier, right? It's curvier. It's, uh, yeah, it's very, it's very grand. It's very grand for your performance. <laughs> um, and typically you see GP Cs. Yes. 11s, 13s, 16s. Um, and then, you know, we've seen GP C 28s and mm -hmm. all that. But this is um, decidedly different than anything in the standard line. It's Spruce and Maple. It's a GPC 600, yo. It's a GPC 600, <laughs> SJ 200, uh, J 185. J 185. Yeah. Yeah. No, so it's it's very cool. So the GP, you know, that body shape. If you're, you know, it's it's not like an OM. It's closer to like a Taylor Grand Auditorium, but the dimensions are a little bit different. Um, and spruce and maple, um, which I really really pretty. Yeah. I love the look of maple. I you know I have long wanted to just do a love letter video to maple because I like maple syrup. Mm -hmm. You know, I like maple on guitars. I like maple bats. Maple's just a great maple wood. leaf's favorite team. Maple, no, but um, I'm more of an avalanche fan. But anyways, I really <laughs> like uh, maple, and um, I think it gets a bad rap in acoustic guitars. It's just misunderstood. It is misunderstood, and a guitar like this goes a long way in correcting that misunderstanding mm -hmm. because it's very cool. So it's it's spruce and maple. It's done in this wonderful amber tone mm -hmm. uh, burst with this really cool border of herringbone. And uh, 
it's kind of hard to see with the burst on the sides, but it's rosewood bound, which is cool. You know, it kind of pops once you see it. Yeah, you probably aren't show. It's probably not going to show up until you look at the like the really close ups. But yeah, it's a really nice contrast that blends nicely and is also you know kind of its own unique thing. Depending upon where it hits it, you have like these window and the side looks into the yeah. the grain of the wood, which is cool. And it's. Um, Ford shifted scalp X bracing. It's a maple neck as well with the stripe, which is sweet. Nice, that yeah. goes all the way, you know, from the headstock the down loop. to the heel, cop, heel cap. Um, it's just a good looking guitar, and I think I was drawn to it because it's so different from Martin. Well, and we've gotten some Maple Martins in the past, and we've mm -hmm. talked on this channel about I wish that Martin would do more with Maple because I like their treatment of Maple. I don't like every guitar manufacturer's treatment of Maple. I like how Taylor braces it, I like what they do with it, I like what Martin does with it. Um, and I think this guitar is a really good example. Now you played it, you're gonna hear it at some point in a, in a little bit, but it's it's got a really nice voice to it. Yeah. That is not what people usually expect of Maple. And, and we'll expound upon that on the other side. Let's talk about the one that you're holding, which really is very, very factory exclusive. Yeah, so this is the Cherry Hill Custom. And this, unlike that one, that one is like an experiment that they build to offer to dealers or to bring to NAM or something like that. This is for people, well, for dealers that go to the factory, um, not for reorder, not going to be on any price list anywhere. This is a true factory exclusive that you can only get when you get there. And it, it has a cool story. It's got a very unique tone wood. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily unique, but a underutilized maybe domestic well, tone I wood. Well, I think it's unique. Other, I mean... What, Seagull sometimes uses it. Martin has used it in the past, yeah. yeah. So uh, Cherry Hill is called Cherry Hill for two reasons. One, OGCF. CFM. OGCFM moved from Manhattan to Cherry Hill, Pennsylvania, starting the journey, yeah. right? Um, That's Christian Frederick Martin, in case you were yeah. wondering if it was like an NFL player or something. Yeah, Ocho Cinco, <laughs> yeah. Um, so moved to Cherry Hill. And this guitar is also made with the domestic tone wood of cherry. So it's cherry back and sides. I like cherry. And otherwise, it is kind of like a custom D18 in its appointments a little bit. I yeah. mean, it's maple bound, which is pretty. Yes. Nice with the cherry and then the Sitka top. Um, I mean, it's diamonds and squares, not necessarily 18-ish, but I guess that's the vibe it gives me, especially because that, you know, When simple... I picked it up, it reminded me of a D18. Yeah, and it's you know it's a very simple guitar. I think for a custom that is this rare, it's a very attractive price, mm -hmm. um, which I think is cool. They could they had the opportunity of making something like this, blinging it out, getting a bunch of pearl on it. This is a special forty series, whatever. But this is a really simple guitar um, compared to most other customs. This is actually priced below like a D twenty eight or something. This is like twenty nine ninety nine. And you can only get it if you go to the factory. We're not going to be able to get one until Chris and I go back up to the factory. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's a very cool guitar. Yeah, we'll definitely be getting more. And you were speculating body shapes maybe? that were... I think I've seen a triple O as well. Yeah, um, I'd love to have a pair of them. Yeah, yeah, I think the thing is they make them, say, in a Dreadnought triple O, whatever one they have there, that's the one you get to choose from. And I like the Dreadnought, I think it's cool. I would love to see the Triple O, though. And I also think that if you listen to the podcast that Chris sent me a while back. Um, Fretboard Journal. Yeah. Not to be, because they put out episodes all the time. They do. They do. Not to be confused with the Fretboard Confessional. Listen, they it's a much a, more rare podcast. Like, we have a rare We have a limited podcast. edition yeah, podcast. Limited edition. Uh, At a uh, low price point. Yeah, yeah. I should call her Lindy up and say, hey, listen, you're doing too much. You need to scale it back and make it really exclusive yeah. like we do. Uh, you know, they actually, shout out to them. They have uh, a network of podcasts at this point. My other favorite one, I don't know if I've sent you, is uh, The Truth About Vintage Amps. I sent it to Gary. That's <laughs> I just love listening to those podcasts. But yeah, so the Fretboard Journal, they, did, uh, they interview guitar builders um, all of the time and musicians and um, interviewed the new Martin CEO. Yeah, and they did talk... Quite a bit about, and I think we kind of talked with Taylor about it. We everybody's talking about domestic tone wood mm -hmm. stuff that's going to be an easier supply, that is a viable thing to use on instruments. 
Taylor's going as their route with Urban Woods, mm -hmm. and it's gotten received well. I think it would just be cool to see more cherry and walnut, and maple, and all that, you know, used properly and making really cool guitars. So this has got a nice story behind it. It's got a nice tone wood with it. I'm going to say, so uh, they did a cherry guitar in the past mm -hmm. um, that we'd carried years ago. Um, this guitar is better than that guitar, and I don't know what all it is that's going on, but I really like this guitar. And it's a very unique sound, so we'll listen to both of them, and we'll kind of talk about them on the other end, but... Uh, I was blown away by this, and just flat out, if you are a Martin fan or a guitar fan in general, that's something that's extremely cool yeah. to have and is going to be rare. So let's take a listen to both of them. So there you have it, two fantabulous Custom Shop Martins. Um, very unique, very, very different in this particular uh, exercise that we have here, two very, very different guitars, um, with a unique tonality all of their own. Should we yeah. talk about this one or that one first? I want to hear what you got to say about the uh, the old cherry, <clears throat> dude. So we likened it aesthetically to a D18. God, 
It's, it's light. It is very light. It's very light, like a nice D18. There's a lot of D18-ish vibes going on here. The cherry tone wood is in a way D18-ish. It's very kind of mahogany-like. Granted, we are always comparing kind of tone woods to either Koa maple, mahogany, or rosewood. It's just how things go. But there's a dampening characteristic to this that I find to be interesting. And what it ends up giving you is a nice, rich, low mid-range. But there's something in the mid that has a dampening characteristic that reminds me of Macassar Ebony. Yeah. Um, and it makes it a little bit player reflective in that way and a little bit like mahogany that's just kind of thicker in certain frequencies. Um, yeah. I, I dig it. It's very cool. Yeah, I do too. And I think that it's a type of sound that a lot of people would be attracted to. And so why not give people the option, you know, and expand it a little bit more? On the other hand, a lot of people get turned off by maple because they think it's brightness machine. And I think this might be the least bright guitar that we've played today. The brightest tone wood is, for back and sides is typically rosewood. Okay, that just write that down. Okay, that's the brightest tone wood. People get confused because it's also the bassiest tone wood and has a scoop mid range and has overtones. But it's it's you know rosewood is complex, or you can think of it as wet sounding. And mahogany, I pointed this one is uh, dry, you know, with a nice pronounced mid range. And maple is flat. It's it's a flat EQ response. And if you looked at that EQ kind of on an oscilloscope or something, or you imagine uh, like a graphic EQ, it's flat and the high end is like comes away. It is not as bright as Rosewood in any way, shape, yeah. or form. I think my theory on it is there were builders, and it didn't hit me until you know, Taylor said something about it, but there were a lot of builders that would approach a guitar made of maple the exact same way they approached other guitars. Same bracing, no changes, just change it to maple back and sides. And that did a disservice to the tone wood. But this guitar is a phenomenal example of what you can do with it. Yeah, and we had, do you remember that pretty curly maple triple O, or mm -hmm. it was an OM, OM or triple O, whatever the it was. cutaway? Yeah. yeah. Um, it had the stripe, to, I mean, I think it's cool. You always see either mahogany or select hardwood. Be wary. But I think a maple neck is cool. I mean, it's it's a cool thing unto itself to have the look, yeah. but the the tone is not, you know, it's similar with Koa. People are always like, man, Koa is so pretty, but it's got a whole sound profile of its own. And I think more people are educated now on Koa and what it's supposed to sound like and how it ages and opens up over time. But maple, it's not just like a clear, glassy, bright tone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... This guitar has a lot of richness, and it's it's just great. I, the thing I say about maple, and I'm going to get this out before I go down a rabbit hole on Nyx. Um, the thing I say about maple is it's player reflective. It's it's trying to be transparent to how you want to play, and and consistently when I hear myself play a maple guitar and somebody else play a maple guitar, it sounds like me. It yeah. sounds like them. Now, where some people might not like that is if you have. If you flub a note or you have lacking technique, it will, it will show you that. And not due to brightness, but because it's not hiding it in any way, which most players would want. You know, you really want that out of a guitar. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think this is why the, uh, the comparison to orchestral instruments is very valid. That is built in a very similar fashion, uh, tonewood-wise, to how a cello or violin is, is produced. It's spruce. And it's maple, and that classic pairing works for a very, very good reason. It has wonderful sustain, it has wonderful volume that comes out of it, and you're gonna sound like you. Yeah. You know, it's and it just it's a really nice. I I don't want to say it's a rich sound. Yeah. But there's a there's plenty of kind of heft there. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go on a diatribe about necks, if that's okay. Talk about it. I think select hardwood's okay if you know what, that it's a select hardwood neck. Yeah. As long as the wood that's being utilized is suitable for a neck. And I think a lot of people get the neck wrong on a guitar, you know, because people will say, well, this neck is doing this to the vault, to the tone of the guitar, or the top is doing the most to the tone of an acoustic guitar. And then the back and sides, you know, the top, the, the bracing, and then the back and sides, that's what's contributing to it. What you want the neck to do is to be stable mm -hmm. and stiff and anchored and not move or rob 
the vibrations from the strings. And so for those reasons, workability, stability, um, mahogany and maple are most often used. And if there's something that's not those, it's like those. Yeah. You know, and so people say, well, a maple neck is going to be brighter. Only in the sense that the maple neck is is even more stable and stiff than yeah. mahogany, which means it's going to rob you know vibrations from the strings even less, which means more is going to be transmitted to the top, which means more of whatever is going on in the top is going to happen. Um, you, so you just get more. There you go. Yeah. It's a system that all works together. And don't you want more? Yeah. I always want more. It's like a, let's get a more knob. Yeah. So. And so this guitar with the uh, the maple being so transparent, it's like. What's can, the middle stripe? Do you know? I think it's rosewood. Is it? Yeah, because it matches the oh, heel gosh, cap. It's so and pretty. Like, yeah, it is very pretty. Um, what does the, the rosewood do to the neck? So yeah, the rosewood, <laughs> I mean, you get that uh, George Harrison tone from the rosewood neck. So maple. But if you change out this screw right here. Oh, you're done, dude. <laughs> Um, yeah, transparent tone wood you can run, but you can't hide. Yeah. You can buy, but you can't reorder. Oh, I like it. I dig it. Right? You know, I just love little quips. You know, this would have made a nice gift for me under the tree. Yeah. I got a, a book instead about Martin guitars that nice. I shared with Cooper. That was, that was one of my favorite gifts I got for Christmas, a book on the history of Martin guitars. And I'm going to tell my wife, this would have been a nice pairing, you know, hey, next year. Yeah. You know, or my birthday. You can just put this. It's there we go. Fantastic. So, Well, both very different from each other, um, bound together by the fact that they say Martin on the headstock and that they're from the factory and that they're unique and cool. If you want more information about either of the instruments or you want to drool over the photos to your content prior to ordering, you can find those on our website at alamomusic.com. The new and improved. And by the way, you can shop on our website uh, by type, so you can just look at all of the pretty acoustic guitars. But if you want to zone in on Martin, you can also shop by brand and check out all of the Martins that we have as well as read some more information about what makes Martin unique. It's pretty cool. It is cool. So that there you go. I mean, <laughs> you got a lesson on tonewoods and necks and all kinds of stuff, and the whole time it was based on these two cool guitars. So you learn something, you have some fun, that's what we're here to do. And if you dig it, you're gonna wanna subscribe. You gotta dig it, y'all. Yeah. Subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, comment below, and all of that helps us and the algorithm and other guitar players, you know, uh, find out about us and the beautiful guitars that some of these great companies offer. So uh, yeah, can you dig it? We hope so. If you're new to the channel, do those things. If you're not, or if you are, anyways, We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.